And it broke. Well, a lot of you guys have said um, that I should make a blimp. But rather than do my general build montage to show you guys how I make things, I think I'm going to show you guys how you can kind of make one at home yourself. Because this is actually a really simple project and it's really fun to do if you have a broken toy helicopter. And um, So the first thing you're going to do is take a helicopter apart. This one luckily comes apart with a screwdriver, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Once you got the guts out of the chopper, it's now time to figure out how this thing all works. Now what this is, is this is a three channel receiver. Uh, mainly there's three movements you can do on the radio to kind of grossly simplify it. But we're only gonna use two channels. We're gonna use the thrusting and we're gonna use the steering. So that's two channels. But now it's important to know that this specific helicopter brain board has a thing called a gyro. Now what the gyro does is it determines um, changes in angular velocity. So if the helicopter were to yaw, which is doing this along this axis, the rotor blades would speed up or slow down depending on how it would have to react to stop the spinning. Now that's kind of great to make it easy to fly, but the thing is now that's something we have to determine. So to determine that, we're going to glue this to a board and figure out which motor needs to go on which side. Once you complete that step, you should get something that looks like this. Now, I also put propellers on it. I picked these up from a uh, cheap toy helicopter. I will put a link down below where you can get your own propellers, but most of these toy uh, quadcopter drones have props in them. You just want to make sure you get a left and a right hand pair. They basically say like A or B on the propeller sets, because that means they are counter rotating, which means one propeller spins one way and the other one spins the opposite direction of that. Now, I'm going to go and throttle up to see what this is going to do. Now, if you can hear that, it's doing RPM changes when I tilt the stick on this axis. So that means this has the, the uh, gyro on the board, and that's basically detecting the angular velocity change. And I'm noticing that it's moving in the wrong direction, because as I rotate the stick this way, this motor is speeding up, and I'm going to make this the front. So we're going to move towards you, and that means that if this was floating in the air, this motor would speed up and drag this even further over, and it would pretty much spin uncontrollably out of control until it crashes. So to remedy that, uh, that, um, that issue, you can either flip the little receiver board upside down, or you can switch the motors from left to right or right to left. I'm simply going to switch the motors by just marking them left and right, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we're pretty much finished with it now. Um, I guess that was the last step. Uh, pretty much what you're gonna do is make a gondola for it or some kind of frame. You can even make something as simple as a stick. Although the stick is very, very hard to fly, I prefer something with a little bit more mass to it because these motors have a minimum RPM which they need to be running at so you can control this thing. So having something like this uh, house, if you remember the uh, Disney Up movie, I always thought this was a fun thing to do. I actually did this once on flight tests, but um, this works really well. So if you notice, the motors are angled up at a slight uh, degree. Basically how this works is it's constantly in a state of descent. And when you throttle up, you drive it forward, but you also gain altitude. And to decrease, and to decrease altitude, you simply just let go of the sticks and it will descend. And you just keep pulsing it to get it to go along and you can just add left and right movements to steer around. It's like a very simple, kind of exaggerated, like three dimensional version of Flappy Bird. If you've ever seen those dumb apps where you tap to go up and then you release to go down. It's the same thing in this uh, situation. Now with the motors too, you also want to verify that they're pulling forward. If they're not going forward, you simply just want to grab your other propellers and swap them back and forward. Normally you'll notice that mark, like I said earlier, with this is A or B. If it's a B prop and it's pushing the wrong direction, try putting the A prop on. If you really look at the propellers, you'll really understand what's going on because they have a slight pitch to them, to the blades, to give you that um, thrust that you need in the right direction. So put those on and then try it out. And it's that simple. Uh, oh, hey, I'm going to do an awkward cut right here, and Sam, I need you to try this because um, I need to demonstrate this. That looks like fun. Did you just snort the helium? Yeah, I did. You know that's like not, that's bad for you? You're, you're a bad, you're a bad influence for children. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> Stop doing that. 
Okay, check this out though. But this is like a very simple, like two channel esque blimp toy thing. I kind of explained how it works already, but um, you throttle up to go forward. When you release the throttle, it sinks like this. And uh, steering is just turning left and right. <laughs> check it out. Uh, I need to add a little more weight to this. Uh, also, if you guys make it, you might want to add more weight to it if it's hard to steer because this thing has a, a minimum like throttle response where it's like running, but the problem is it's climbing too fast, so I need to add more weight to it. Otherwise, it becomes non-controllable. Cause see, I'll just hit the ceiling like, like right now. So hang on, mods. I have this small electronic switch. I'm just gonna put in there to make it sink faster. Okay. Haha, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> Just like the movie. I think this movie's faster than the movies. Oh, the range cut off. This thing is uh, IR controlled. It has like IR LED, so it sucks. Your helicopter may be on a radio frequency such as 2.4, which will work a lot better. But um, hey, you want to try it? Oh. It's it's sensitive on on the uh, the it's sticks. It's so powerful. Yeah, you have more throttle than you will definitely ever need. Bro. Man, you're bad at this. I just needed to go. Ah. Try going around the shop without blowing up. <laughs> See what it did there? Blowing up? If you touch the lights, it'll probably explode. Oh. There's a lot of sharp things in my uh, shop, so. Next, we should fill this up with hydrogen yes. and have a propane torch. Yes. Obstacle course. Okay, that's pretty much it for the um, simple how to build a portion. Like I said, if you guys are having problems, um, make sure to check your, your gyro direction and also that you have enough weight so it's sinking at the right velocity if it's too hard to steer. Because um, you want to make sure the motor can it up, like I said earlier, and you know, then some. Because it, it works pretty well once you get it dialed in. But this wouldn't be me if I didn't do something a little more spectacular, so I did this. Check this one out. I lost a little bit of helium in this, but look. Uh, FR Sky sent me this sweet six channel receiver, so I put it in there. And I also have these Banggood um, $7 ESCs that are for brush motors, so I figured I can make all a blimp with all this stuff. And I got this new run cam split micro, which is like GoPro like quality, but without all the weight. And surprisingly, it all fits on a balloon. Not this one because it's lost helium, but we need to reinflate it. But let's uh, drive this thing around. Okay, Sam, you ready for the house tour? Let's see. The long awaited house tour. This thing is super hard to drive. It's way harder to drive than the uh, house. Why is this so ridiculous? Go home, balloon. You're drunk. Yeah, this thing is definitely way too hard to steer. It's n it's nowhere near as easy as it flies the freaking house. The problem with it, though, is when you apply throttle, the uh, torque from the motor twists the balloon around, too, so I'm having to deal with that when trying to drive it as well. Well, I think this concludes this video. Um, Yeah, it's a little bit of a boring video, sort of. I mean, there was no explosions, after all. But, um... This does make you kind of want to build an actual Zeppelin with some hydrogen in it. So let me know if you guys want to see me go through the process of making an envelope because I think I really do want to try to make an actual full like real Zeppelin type thing because I've never tried it before because this is simply a blimp because it's a, um, a flexible body. It's not a rigid body like a Zeppelin would be. So maybe we'll try it in the future. So now let's pop it. Oh God. <laughs> hey, hey, go get the dart. Go get the dart. We got five. <laughs> And you then I let him live. Don't screw up.
Ah! Can I fly? Oh yeah, I can still make it. Oh no. Make... Ah! That's no fair. You're gonna get torched. Here we go. Oh. <laughs>